Access request processing with operator access control is an eight step process whereby Oracle initiates a process with a ticket of some sorts and you as the customer respond. In this diagram, we'll show the Oracle operator steps in red, the customer notification and authorization of the access shown in blue. The work in the Linux True Jail here shown in yellow. And then finally, the customer security staff monitoring in green. The step one, some business process will create a JIRA ticket for an Oracle operator. So our Oracle operator's unit of work is the JIRA ticket. The methods by which we create JIRA tickets are typically event triggers that happen automatically in the infrastructure, such as a fan speed or a process failure or something like that. Or a customer SR can generate an event that will create a JIRA ticket. Our JIRA ticket is assigned to a person at Oracle. That person at Oracle, our Oracle Cloud Ops operator, will assess the ticket and then create an access request inside of the Oracle tenancy for administration. That access request will be sent to the customer tenancy and show up as a notification for access. You as the customer are notified either via op control interfaces or notifications. In these cases, you'll either interact with the web UI or the API interfaces for the OCI interfaces, or you'll get an email notification, pager, Slack, and so on. You as the, op the customer will assess the ticket access request reason, determine if it can be approved. And if the answer is yes, you'll access an OCI interface, either web UI or an API interface to perform the authorization step. After you as the customer perform the operation step, software will orchestrate the deployment of a temporary Chirrut jail inside of the Exadata infrastructure. The key for authentication in this process is the cloud operations staff hardware UB key is used to create the request. The access request that's authorized by the customer will use the software deploy the same UB key public credential inside the temporary credential in the Chirrut jail. In this method, we can tie an individual Oracle person to any shell that's executed inside of the operator access control. Once the Chirrut jail is deployed, our cloud ops staff will log into the Chirrut jail and perform the work that they need to do. Because the credential is in the Linux Chirrut jail, it's very easy for us to use the Linux audit service to share the command logging, optional keystroke logging of what our operator is executing. Those logs could be sent either directly to a customer syslog server security information management system, as we shown in the setup page, they will be sent to the OCI logging service to that log group that we just set up a little bit earlier. The logging service can optionally be sent to the streaming service, and then finally the streaming service to arbitrary equipment, such as a Splunk server. Should any of the security staff or authorized staff authorized to perform security actions deem necessary to terminate the operator access, that staff simply executes a revoke command from an operator access control credential. And that revoke command is executed. The software will destroy all of the processes that have been started by all of the credentials associated with that access request. Any subprocesses spawned by those processes. It will terminate the SSH TCP connections and finally revoke the credentials from the Chirrut jail, stopping the operator work from proceeding any further and preventing any future login without an additional access request. Should you take action to revoke, you should also open a security SR to Oracle so that we can start a security investigation to identify whether, you know, what was going on that caused you pause to terminate the request. If it was a benign request, we'd simply issue a new access request and you would approve it. Or if it was a request that required further investigation, Oracle will comply with all applicable laws.